We, we have uh, Dean Smith here, the architect of the same-sex marriage legalisation bill. Uh, now, Dean Smith, before we do get on to the topic of the day, there is another one. Um, let's talk about citizenship, mm. because your story from some years back actually has some relevance to what we're seeing now. You replaced, to, to remind viewers, you replaced Judith Adams, who sadly died in, in 20, 2012. Right. You came in to, um, into Parliament uh, that year in May. Uh, you, uh, you actually see, sought to renounce your British citizenship. It took four months and July 30th of 2012 was when it actually took effect, which meant that you, for four years you were a dual citizen for the in, intense purposes of the Constitution. Well, when that was revealed to me, it was quite a surprise because um, having made the necessary inquiries with the British High Commission here in Australia, um, I was under the very strong and confident uh, position that all I needed to do was take all the necessary reasonable steps. Um, those steps that were uh, relayed to me was to fill out the renunciation document, which I did, and you would have seen that, dated 3rd, the 3rd of April 2012. Uh, in addition to that, actively surrender my British passport. So I did that, you know, handed it over and sent it away in the mail. So I was quite comfortable that by the time I came to the Senate in May, all of those requirements had been met. Now, of course, as a young guy, I thought actively about being a state parliamentarian or a federal parliamentarian, so I was very aware that in the West Australian State Parliament, you can be a dual national. There are mm. no issues with that at all. But in the federal parliament, the Section 44 requirement was quite strict. Uh, the advice I got was to take all necessary steps. Uh, I thought I did that. So it was a surprise when, as a senator, I went back to the High Commission and said, please, can I have some documentation and can I have my passport back? So do you, do you have a sense of, do you, do you respect what the, the situation, the, the Labor MPs and senators are going through here? Do you think well, uh, sympathy? Well, ha I have sympathy for those people who in all good faith have done everything that they thought that they needed to do and everything that, that was advised of them. Um, but of course I don't know the individual circumstance yep. of uh, other, other members of Parliament, but uh, I am relieved that I'm in the clear. Yeah, well, you are in the clear, of course, we should uh, emphasise that. But you are a constitutional conservative, mm, mm. given your own experience and what, what Parliament's going through here. Do you support uh, amendment of Section 44 of the Constitution? At this particular point in time, I'd have to say no. I do think that Australians should have one allegiance if they are in our federal parliament and that allegiance should be to Australia. I think that we should set up the necessary mechanisms to make that easy for people to do and to give people confidence that they have actually done that. Um, without naming names, we can see some of the political drama and turmoil that surrounds people who might be seen to have uh, allegiances to other countries. Uh, I, I'm steadfast. I think it's necessary and appropriate for Australians in our federal parliament to have their allegiance to our great country. All right, well, let's get on to say same-sex marriage. Now, you are the architect of this bill. In fact, it's 53 weeks ago since this Senate Select Committee was formed to establish what we're seeing today. What does this mean to you? Well, um, it's a lot of things. Uh, you know, myself and my Liberal colleagues and those senators that joined with me in the Senate, uh, this is the end of what has been a struggle, uh, a campaign for many, many, many years for many people. So as exciting as it is to be at the end of this and to have that sort of public attention, I'm very, very conscious that I've been called upon to act, you know, in the final few steps of making this happen. I'm excited about that. I'm confident that when the House of Representatives pass this, this bill, uh, that there will be great goodwill. There will be great goodwill across the country because the people were asked to participate in a survey. They did. Mm -hmm. The Parliament was asked to give effect to a sensible bill that would allow for same-sex marriage and protect religious views about marriage, and they will. So this is a, an exciting time for our country. This is, this is big reform. It's owned by everyone and it's actually owned by the Australian people. Now, you've written yourself into the history books. There's only t been 29 private members' bills passed into law. Is that a measure of the risk that you took personally here? I, I think it's a measure of what can be done when people put some of their partisan politics behind them, when people reach out across the chamber, find issues that they can work on together uh, and work to an outcome, like you've alluded to. 53 weeks ago the Senate established the Senate Select Committee process. This is not something that has fallen out of the sky in the last few weeks. This has been over a year's work and very, very detailed and conscientious work by myself and other senators and other members. So this is the people's win, it's the parliament's win. I think that if we can find other issues 
uh, and show or apply similar courage, then we might be able to move other issues forward in our country that once upon a time people thought weren't possible to be in, moved in forward. In fact, in your speech the other day, you were saying that we've seen Parliament at its best. Is, mm. is this what you're talking about? I do. I, I really do believe that. I am... I'm an old-fashioned parliamentarian. I wanted to be a parliamentarian in our national parliament ever since I was a school kid. Uh, and there are times in the five years when I've been a senator when the Senate and the parliament has not been a place to be particularly proud of. That's not today, that's not this week. Uh, this is an exciting time for those that believe in our parliamentary traditions and our parliamentary democracy. What have you made of the demands from those wanting um, religious and uh, you know, freedom of speech uh, protections? Mm. Are, are, they, are they relevant here to this debate? Well, I've paid close attention to them, uh, both when they were raised in the Senate and when they've been raised in the House of Representatives. Uh, but I've been paying attention to these issues for months, if not a year. Uh, I've done my due diligence. I've gone out and spoken to people and I've come to the very, very strong and clear position that the religious protections that currently exist in Australian laws are sufficient, are working well. And Andrew, I'd remind you that when we've heard criticism about the bill, we've heard criticism about international experience, we've not heard criticism about the deficiencies or failings of existing Australian laws. That would have been the first test. So they were spurious? Spurious and unnecessary. OK, now a royal assent um, could come as early as tomorrow. That means that we won't have any same-sex marriage for um, wedding ceremonies for about a, a, a month, I, I understand. Any invitations? <laughs> I got my first one this morning, actually. Of course, in the Parliament, uh, we had our World AIDS Day breakfast today, even though it's the 7th of December and World AIDS Day is celebrated on the 1st of December. Uh, and uh, I inquired um, with, a, with, a, with a friend who's a medical researcher about his family and he leant over to me and said, we're going to get married in June of next year. I suspect that uh, LGBTI Australians who want to get married uh, would like a little bit of time because I'm sure they want to get the arrangements perfect. All right. Well, a day of celebration for you. Well done and uh, hell of a year for you. Dean Smith, thank you so much. Thank you. Roz.